Action! What is line? Welcome to Kermit Uncut. I did a blog a week or so ago about the DVD release of The Disaster Artist. And I was talking about The Disaster Artist in the room and wondering whether there really were such things as movies that were so bad that they were good. And my conclusion was that a movie has to be trying to be good in order to be so bad it's good. So, for example, Hudson Hawk is a movie that I think was intending to be a great movie, just happened to be terrible, but I rather loved it. And I asked you for some suggestions of what you think are movies that are genuinely so bad they're good. Loads and loads of responses to that. Here are just a few of them. Many of them really, really interesting. This from Maven Goose. My favourite is Species. Combine Alien with Basic Instinct at a script of mind-blowing ineptitude. Forrest Whitaker declaring, something bad happened here upon seeing a blood-soaked rail carriage. And some truly bemused performances. Ben Kingsley, Alfred Molina, peppered with gratuitous nudity and shoddy effects, and you're left with something so mind-blowingly awful, it's brilliant. When Species came out, I did an interview with Ben Kingsley for it, for Radio 1. And I remember having seen the film and thought exactly the same as you thought. I mean, the scene in which, you know, Forrest Whitaker, who is an empath, stands in a room covered in blood and says, something bad happened in here. It was guffaws of laughter. Ben Kingsley, when doing the publicity for the film, was incredibly straight-faced about it. He went, oh yes, it's such an original idea and so completely terrifying. And I remember sitting in the room thinking, I cannot tell whether you are taking the mick or whether you are just seriously trying to sell this to me as something which is A, original, and B, terrifying. Oh, God. Well played, Sir Ben. This from Brian. Yellowbeard is so bad, it's good. The film is such an incoherent mess, but its lack of polish and structure genuinely worked for it. It really is completely bonkers. Just thinking about Yellowbeard makes me laugh. The interesting thing about Yellowbeard is this. I remember John Cleese saying that he had done Yellowbeard because it was a Graham Chapman project and he did it because he really, really liked Graham Chapman and describing it as one of the six worst films ever made. However, there was also a quote from Eric Idle, which I found, which I'd forgotten about. He said, sometimes the best times can be on the worst movies and vice versa, e.g. Yellowbeard, which I wouldn't have missed for the world. And this completely chimes with something I've said loads and loads of times. The movies that are the most fun to make for the people making them are often the least fun to watch for the audience. I only ever saw Yellowbeard when it came out. I've never seen it again, and I don't think I want to. But I absolutely understand that thing about, hey, the movie sucked, but we had a great time making it. This is from Mailzoid. Mark hits the nail on the head. To make a truly awful film, one must aspire to make a good one, which rules out the asylum and their mockbusters, which aim so low they show contempt for the audience. My personal favourite, and I've forgotten this film completely, is Samurai Cop, which marries the ludicrous dialogue and inept performances of the room to production values of startling poverty. The whole endeavour was shot in daylight rather than at night, wrapped up in a lethal weapon style thriller. Highly recommended. Yeah, I, again, long time since I saw it. Wow, Samurai Cop. This from London Lewis, Jupiter Ascending, is horrific. I think the fact it was made without irony is the reason I couldn't watch the whole thing, thumbs down from me. And on a very, very similar note from Robert Paulson, Jupiter Ascending, a preposterous film apparently made without irony, enjoyable for its childish simplicity and its studio-sanctioned, unchecked, multi-million dollar silliness. I went back to look at my review for Jupiter Ascending because I remember seeing Jupiter Ascending just over the way in the, the BFI IMAX, huge big screen, and it got terrible reviews, but I kind of liked it. Anyway, I went back to look at my original review and it says this, when it comes to bonkers, overcooked, overambitious sci-fi, the Wachowskis really are in a world of their own. It took me three runs to get my head around their adaptation of David Mitchell's Cloud Atlas, but I suspect that this colourfully ridiculous Star Wars Matrix Flash Gordon mishmash has delivered all of its riches on first viewing. See, I did enjoy it, but I didn't want to go back and see it again. This I like from uh, Womble. Surely the ultimate So Bad It's Good studio was Canon Films. And this is absolutely right. Canon made a whole load of movies, some of which were kind of fun, some of which were genuinely terrible. Goes on to talk about the fact that when Canon were making these movies, they actually thought some of them were really, really good. Uh, travesties like Superman 4, Masters of the Universe still smacked of cheapness as Canon didn't have the money in the bank to properly fund them. What I would say about that is there is a brilliant documentary called Electric Boogaloo, the wild untold story of Canon Films, which runs the entire history of the Canon back catalogue. And just watching it is such a nostalgic joy because there's films in there that you probably loved and hated at the same time. I mean, some that you would have just hated, but plenty to love and hate simultaneously. This, which I really like from Larry76, for sheer bonkers value, Biggles 
cannot be meaten. Do you remember, you remember Biggles from the 1980s British movie? Open to terrible reviews. It goes on to say, from the moment John Anderson bellows, do you want to be a hero? You get rock rolling adventure. Peter Cushing in his final big screen appearance and Neil Dixon as the title character cut a dashing hero. Funnily enough, I went online to check because I, I remembered it got very, very badly reviewed. I remember not liking it very much. It subsequently has developed a cult following. Nowadays, people actually think it's quite interesting. I mean, it's really mad. I mean, really, really mad. I can't imagine the production meeting in which somebody suggested that film, but it has now developed a cult following. This from Simon Dillon. My So Bad It's Good Guilty Pleasure is Angels and Demons. Oh, and from when I was a child, Condor Man. Good Lord, Condor Man. Again, haven't seen that since it first came out, and I don't really want to go and see it again. Uh, this from Green, 1878. My Guilty Pleasure is Battlefield Earth. Sometimes referred to as the worst film ever. I secretly love it. Battlefield Earth is a film that's so bad, it's unwatchable. And I know because I've tried to watch it three times and I have never made it to the end. Which is why you should have me take a group of man animals with equipment out to a remote area, better that you don't know where, and try and train them. <laughs>